Welcome to Screen Heroes episode 108. I am Derek, one of your weekly hosts. I have my other two lovely hosts with me. Why are you talking like Shatner? I am one of your weekly hosts. <laughs> Ryan. Hello. And Ray. Hi. And do you want to introduce our guests? Uh, sure. So these two ladies are my new besties. For real. No, this is Nicole and Casey, and they're fellow cosplayers, and we saw the movie together on Friday, so I thought it would be really fun to invite them on. Fact. Heck yeah. Cool story. Yeah. <laughs> we had noodles. What movie? We did have noodles. Tomb Raider. <laughs> is that what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about Tomb Raider. Yes, we are reviewing the new 2018 Tomb Raider movie, not the old Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movies. Correct. Just to clarify. Yes. Correct. Yes. So. Very, very, very different films. <laughs> very different films. Very different. Um, but first, we're going to talk news. A little bit. What do you want to talk about? Well, the Infinity War trailer, That's clearly. That's the obvious answer. Yeah. 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 Okay. What it about happened. It? <laughs> it did happen. It did happen. It did. It did. There was a trailer for a movie. A lot of people saw it. And <laughs> tickets, were, tickets went on sale, and I think they've already beaten Black Panther's... Uh, Pre-sales and and they should to be honest. Yeah. I mean this this movie is ten years in the making, right? Now, so Black Panther was just you know thirty years overdue. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, this one has a Fair lot enough. of weight with the movie. That's not social weight; it's entertainment weight. You yeah, know? and so I I expected it to sell more than Black Panther. I mean, people are expecting this to be the first two billion dollar movie. So could be. It, it better have be a lot of advanced sales, no, right? Never, yeah. Mm-hmm. Infinity War is going to be bonkers. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Heard of your friends. Just, like, every <laughs> oh, kid. hey, Chief Foles, yeah. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> the Usually people of, chat this early. The, it's the exciting. Best, the best scene is Cap holding, uh, that holding is such Thanos a back. Good scene. I mean, realistically, Thanos isn't punching or trying to do anything strong. He's just trying to grab something, and Cap's like using everything he's got, but whatever. But still. It's Cap, and he's my favorite <laughs> Avenger, so. I think Thanos is trying to he's squash trying. like a spider, right. and Cap's trying to stop him. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Or he's going for a, an Infinity Stone. Just well, there's, I don't know. there's a lot. Either one. There's a scene <laughs> that's direct from the comics in this, and that's the Doctor Strange torture scene. Mm. Mm. Um, Which is really scary because he's super powerful. And, and he probably well. knows now yeah. where all the Infinity Stones yeah. are at this point. So it's very likely this is how Thanos finds out, is from this torture scene. Because something that Thanos and his Black Order has probably will get Doctor Strange to talk. Like, it's just They reference the infamous snap from the comic books, the finger snap that kills half of the life of the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of theories out there that the movie is going to end with that snap. That would... How, how weird would it be if they ended it with that snap, it went to black, and there was no post credit scene? And you have scene. no idea <laughs> what's coming up. Well, you have happens. a lot of people mad for sitting right. through the credits, because there's so many people who are involved in a Marvel movie. And we yeah. have to Especially wait. Especially this one. We have to wait right? two years to see who's going to die. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, that would be oh. brutal. Like, two Pretty years savage. to just see a dead Chris <laughs> Evans would make me cry so hard. Like Maybe um, you don't get to see any of them, they're just not in the second movie. Right. You no, I think to. we're just all going to be a mess, like, yeah. no matter what. Yeah, just, I'd probably be okay with no post credit scenes because I will just be emotionally distraught. Well, that, and I don't <laughs> want them to just immediately hint at Ant-Man versus, or Ant-Man and Wasp, where it's like, happy go lucky, yeah. I'm on house arrest, everything's fine. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine if they do a post credit scene, it'll have anything to do with Captain Marvel or Ant-Man and the Wasp. Maybe Captain Marvel on a stretch, Maybe. but Ant-Man and the Wasp, I can't see that. That would be weird. Yeah. I mean, there, there, were, there were rumors that Captain Marvel did shoot scenes, but then all of her scenes got cut, so maybe she's she, she's probably well, the post credit scene. I honestly mm-hmm. believe she did shoot scenes because her film is not filming, and she's been on a set and filmed on set, so... Or is it filming? Oh no, my it God. is filming because there's mm-hmm. set photos taken today, so unless they're shooting oh, Infinity okay. War still... No, I more meant the ones from, like, six months ago that surfaced. It's the same... Like, it's the exact same costume and everything. It looks like a very you similar area. You mean can wear the same clothes? It looks what? like a very similar <laughs> setting. <laughs> Not a Marvel movie. <laughs> Weird. Other, other than Agent <laughs> Coulson, true. nobody else has worn the same outfit twice. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> and Coulson wears a different suit every time, so let's get Does he? Going. Yeah. It looks the same. Hmm. I mean, Fury's got the same eye patch. Not in Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, yeah, that's exciting. 
Yeah, the it looks really good. Jessica Jones released last week. Was it? I finished it yesterday. How was it? Not as good as the first season, but I think that people are complaining a lot about it. It was pretty. I think I thought it was entertaining. I haven't gotten that far yet, but the complaints I've heard so far is just like it doesn't have as compelling of a villain. Yeah, and that's, and that's very the, true. The struggle with things. It it's is, not... but I actually thought the villain was compelling. Isn't um, it Typhoid Mary? Even more than Kilgrave? Not more than Kilgrave. Okay. No, no, it's. Yeah, I can't, I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, um, then don't. Like, there, I, there's a huge spoiler, and I almost just said it, but uh, thank you um, for not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's a good villain. Okay. Um, what about the Venom movie that we saw the preview woo! for too? I wanted more. Is it the same than teaser that be... they already released? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's I a thing. It's yeah. mixed, I saw that, like, and I'm like, yeah. they could go so many different it's ways. It could be good, or it could be really, really, really they, bad. They like, uh, <laughs> they saw all the complaints about how can they make a Venom movie with no Spider-Man, and they were like. We're going to make a Venom movie with no Venom. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we're going to go so far, you won't even know. Yeah. I mean, there is It's nothing. just a Tom Hardy movie. It, that's it, the trick. That's what it looks like. It looks like he got... Well, you see one of the little things come out behind his neck at the one point, and that's Do about you? it. Yeah, when he's on the, like, cat scan table or yeah, I'm not a medical bed. professional. And, and he's, like, screaming, and then you can see right at the very end of the little It's called a bed. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, yeah. I thought it was like that's in the, the bed. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, but the MRI the bed. is the okay. bed. The bed of the MRI. Oh, the bed yeah. of the MRI he was laying on. Yeah. I'm sorry. And yeah, so a little tentacle thing came out. <laughs> and that was it. The little tentacle thing is also the technical term for right. what that was. Yeah. Okay. The that's... Shazam logo released. Yes. Mm. You updated your cover photo. I did like because hours I love ago. it. You're it's very, very excited. Pretty. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's a lot of people complaining about it. They're like, oh, it looks so boring. Look at any. It's just yeah. One it's word, literally guys. the name and a lightning bolt. <laughs> if you look at any Marvel movie, it's the same treatment. You know. Do you remember the t- the first teaser for Avengers was just them slowly zooming in on the A? Like that was it. That was it. Yeah. That was the only thing, and people lost their damn minds. Like, <laughs> well, even Thor Ragnarok was just like cool '80s colors and you know the <laughs> '80s effects. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's whatever. It, uh, people are going to complain about anything. Yeah. It's His great. suit's too childlike. It's too red. The lightning bolt isn't big enough. There's too many layers to the cape. Whatever. He's I'm done with it. So sad. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Ryan. I just want to see the movie. That's He's how really, I really passionate feel. about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there other news? I feel like other stuff happened. Oh, um, Fox is toying around with a Buffy reboot. They oh, want yeah. to do that. Uh, it's been in their heads for a really long time. Right now, it's just rumors, and I'm completely against it. But... So am I. I love Buffy. I mean, yeah, Slayer Club. Hello. Um, yeah, but but again, like one of the interviews that I read was saying, you know, it was with Joss Whedon, and he was saying how he is not endorsing another reboot of this franchise, and so they're talking about doing it without him. How can you have a Buffy reboot know. with no Joss Whedon? You're taking the soul out of it. And you're just going to, what? What's well, going to be left? What do they like, expect? Are they going to do like a shot for shot remake like The Office did? And I doubt it. Like, I doubt it. would just be terrible. No. Or are yeah. they going to like mix up everybody, change genders and races? Kind of like they did with Heathers? And Charmed. Oh and Charmed. God. Like uh, The Charmed yeah. reboot sounds awful. All three girls are like... They put a bunch of tropes in a hat and just start picking them picking out. Them like, there's the lesbian activist <laughs> and the sorority cheerleader. And I was like, there's like, well, there's different theories too that a lot of these networks ratings are going down. So they think, oh, well, I'm just going to reboot a show that did really well and this is yeah. going to bring everything. We had nine seasons right. like 10 years ago. But I don't think that's going to be It's going to be a case. different audience too, yeah, especially because exactly. they're changing things to, to reach those younger mm-hmm. generations. Yeah, but. Exactly. Why not just use just freaking brand new content, guys? Exactly. Like, just start over. <laughs> I have no skin in the game with Buffy, but Joss Whedon <laughs> has kind of fallen off the horse lately with some of the stuff he's done. It's been disappointing. At Justice League, the lowest grossing DC movie. I don't want to um, talk about it. Move on. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Avengers and over, Ultron. But didn't he take over for something He else? did, but Come it's on. pretty deb- hotly debated that the stuff he added kind of ruined the movie. Um, when which, you have two people with competing... Sure. That's what's going We're not in the yeah. studio. We don't know. But there's a lot of information yes. that came out. <laughs> and so, you know, sure, fair enough. Joss Whedon did Avengers Age of Ultron and was super overwhelmed and it got not very good reviews also. Uh, so the stuff I've seen from him. He's had a rough time since Ultron. Yeah, he has. He has. Um, but in the reboot news, uh, <laughs> Melissa Joan Hart is going to be doing Clarence. a Clarence oh, yes, Explains yes. It All reboot. I'm actually really that. excited about that. Yeah, I, I love that show. Yeah, I did too. So. Yeah, childhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's you had a crush on I just like so the sound whenever I, I had more of a crush like on her sister. 
her younger sister. She had we, a younger brother? She had a younger sister. Right. No. Ferguson. She was Ferguson. Uh oh. She I was like, sister. I don't remember her having a sister uh -oh. either. Pretty sure she had a sister. You I'm pretty just sure you're thinking of a completely different. Are you thinking are you thinking of Sabrina the Teenage Witch? No, no, not not no no no. Not Clarissa's sister, Melissa Joan Hart's sister. Oh, oh okay, my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ferguson you was need to specify. <laughs> I, said, I said Melissa Joan Hart is rebooting Clarissa uh, so uh, Explains yeah. It All. And then you said and you had a crush on her sister. What You said I had a, you had a crush Did on her. Did you have a crush on her? I yeah. thought you meant Melissa Joan okay. Hart. Gotcha. Yeah, I meant Clarissa. Okay, character. I'm sorry. I can see how that's confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a crush really on Melissa Joan Hart's out. sister. <laughs> I'm really glad we worked that Thank you, thank you. Wow. Wouldn't want to break up on air again. Uh, mm. Our Twitch chat tonight happen. really thinks Ryan's pretty sexy. Oh, oh dang. So I get that a lot. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to it by now. Yeah. It's all of his passion. Yeah. yeah. They just, they really dig it. You know? And the fact that he doesn't spill spoilers everywhere. I almost yeah. did. I was this close. Almost. Because it's like revealed stabbing. early in the show and I almost just was like, oh, it happened for eight episodes so it was pretty I don't know I'm glad I didn't though because that would have ruined it for everybody <laughs> of course you guys probably are never going to watch it but I am really I am glad we it. took you guys journey. are going to watch it I'm sorry about those two sorry uh, I don't know about them yeah they still haven't done season one I don't think so it's for a, fair reasons yeah, I'm not, there's, I'm there's not, a, we have reasons, I'm not, uh, but, not yeah, judging I'm just saying you what know, are I don't your think reasons? It much. It's a difficult show <laughs> to watch. That's okay. all. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. There's subject matter that is gotcha. probably is. more is. painful yeah. for some people. It's not, it's not an actual, like, we're not, it's nothing against the show. You guys tipping toeing around the fact that I was assaulted <laughs> is hilarious. <laughs> I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> I know. You're fantastic. And I love you, too. You're my, my friends. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Yes, let's talk Tomb Raider. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So, uh, Tomb Raider came out. It didn't do great domestically. Um, so, $90 million budget, which is actually fairly low. Um, for pro uh, kind of some context, Bright, the Netflix movie with Will Smith, also got $90 million. Mm -hmm. So, that was considered a low budget film. This one was actually in theaters with the same budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it made $23.6 million domestically, which is about $3 million short of Black Panther. Black Panther won for the fifth week <laughs> in a row. Uh, but it made one hundred five. million. Uh, internationally so it, it brought in almost 130 million which isn't you know terrible it's an interesting trend that m video game movies just do really well not mm -hmm. here you know warcraft mm -hmm. was the same way it did really well in china it did not do well here but uh you know what will do well here because his name's attached to it even though it looks ridiculous Rampage. Yeah, Rampage yeah. would do very well. Yeah. But I think people have forgotten that that's a video game. I True. completely so. agree with you. And it doesn't really look anything like the video game, um, since I played that one quite a bit. You mean The Rock didn't have a close friendship with an albino gorilla? I mean, he may have. The game doesn't focus yes, on the humans. Yes, I just said that sentence. So, yes, I did. The game focuses on the monsters. When yeah. you say it that way, I really want to go see it. Now. I know. It sounds, it sounds, sounds very compelling. You, John, and I should go check it out. Mm, we'll see. Yeah, we can do it. I'm still not convinced. We'll be right I, behind that. I'm yeah. okay with that. I'm All down. Right. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be really hilarious. And I don't know if it's meant to be hilarious, but right. I'm probably going to yeah. laugh, like, the whole time. So maybe we should, like, have brunch, see a Sunday morning. Yeah. Well, Dwayne's got a great sense of humor she about himself, first. so I don't think yeah, he has true. any qualms all people that's poking true. fun at him. No, I don't think he know, cares. So. Then we're going to get drunk and go watch the movie. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Have a totally different experience from everybody that's watching it sober. <laughs> okay. I mean, depending on the theater, you can get drunk while you're watching it. That's true. That's because that there's so many, very almost true. every theater now you can do that. Ryan's very disappointed in the direction we're going. <laughs> it He's like, never again, guys. Never again. All right. So Tomb Raider. Yes. yes. All right. So this is the third movie in the Tomb Raider franchise based off of the reboot, not the old versions of the games that the two Angelina Jolie movies were based off of. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, we could give our spoiler-free reviews. Right. So, yeah, um, so for those who are not familiar with it, we go around the table and do just a quick couple sentences, spoiler-free, of what your overall thoughts are of the film before we dive into the spoiler part of the show. Ryan, you get to go first. It's fine. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> a man of many words. <laughs> you're you're I mean, allowed to elaborate. It's extremely <laughs> mediocre. Um, I don't know if I liked it better than the original movie. 
I didn't like it better than the game or as much as the game. Do you want to watch both of them back to back and compare? Um, I don't think I could actually do that. It's (laughs) very tough to compare. That's why I struggle with it a little bit. I kind of go back and forth on which one I like more, but uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, if you really just love Tomb Raider more than anything in the world, you're probably going to really like this movie. But if if you really don't care that much about Tomb Raider, you're probably going to be very ambivalent towards it and probably save your money and watch it when it's on TBS. Yeah. Or one other network show, a network yes. channel that you get for free or whatever. <laughs> well, that explains why John really liked it. Yeah, John liked it a lot. Our my co-host on Gamer Heroes, he's obsessed with Tomb Raider. I know, and he gave me a talking to before the podcast. So. Did he really? Oh yeah. Is that why you're being kind of nice about it? Like, no, I mean, I, is, is I being nice about it? I feel like I'm being. Did he of, bug you? Is he listening in? Um, I don't know if he's. He I don't know. John's I don't know. never actually listened to anything no. that we've done. No, no, he's, he has, I don't think he has. No. Classic. <laughs> Well, I d- kind of disagree with that. I thought it was great. Like there, there, there are things about it that we'll obviously talk about. Yes. But in comparison, especially to the first films, it is eons above those, in my opinion. And that's where I'm going to stop. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I agree. I've actually have seen it twice. The first, I enjoyed it more the second time, um, definitely, which was really weird. But as far as like the budget goes. They did a really good job for what they had as far as that budget yeah. goes. And for what the movie is, I think they did a really nice job of capturing like video game aspects in the movie. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but I enjoyed it. I was afraid I was going to say any sort of spoilers if I kept going. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to stop this up now. Shit. I really liked it, too. I thought it was a fun watch. I thought uh, there, there were some really high points in the mm-hmm. film. I never thought there was like some terrible, terrible lows that took me out of it. So there, I there were mediocre moments for sure, but I overall liked the film. There. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was really good, especially for a video game movie. Not that there's a whole lot of competition, but there, you know, there's some some level that it has to hit. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I got to actually see something in IMAX for a change because it wasn't 3D. <laughs> yeah, and that makes me so happy. You hate so, 3D too? I do. Oh, I really do. Yeah. There's only two movies I've ever oh. seen where it worked, and otherwise, it's just kind of a waste. So, yeah. yeah. So let's dive in. This is your spoiler warning. If you have ha- have not seen the new Tomb Raider movie and you care about spoilers, go ahead and pause, go see it, come back, and let's go. Let's okay. do this. So I would like to say that. Out of all of the stuff that she took, like getting beat up and hurt and stuff, like you mm-hmm. felt her pain. Like her acting was, yeah, really good. Like you know when she gets punched in the stomach or hit or mm-hmm. anything like that. Like she does a really, really good job with that. I just, I don't know. I, just have I don't think even going beyond that. I think they just did a really great job at finding a great. Laura Croft. Yeah, yeah. She, that is yes. like the the thing that I think was kind of missing from the other films is having somebody that's realistic that you believe in that you can see, like you said, her struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Also, like you, you're kind of rooting for her. Like you kind of find yourself being like, yeah, this is a victorious moment, and she deserves this moment. Mm-hmm. I liked that um, she wasn't a superhero from the get go. Like yes. she had to kind of strive and get better and better that you know the first time we see her she's mm-hmm. getting her ass kicked and mm-hmm. then she gets you know hauled in by the police and yeah. and you yeah. notice like it from the beginning too when she does get um beat in the ring that she pulls off that move like towards the end yeah she, like when it really counts and she nails it and i thought that was really it's nice, nice that they tied that in yeah, yeah. yeah. Bow. it's definitely <laughs> a, it's definitely an origin story right like she's still trying to figure out who she is oh, rather sure. than kind of hitting the ground running like you do in like in, in like Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is mm-hmm. a parallel I made a lot of like he's already Indiana Jones mm-hmm. at that point and yeah. <laughs> you're just in the middle of it. Uh, where she's just kind of becoming that character. So I, I really like that quite a bit. Um, I thought she was great. I mean she's a really good actor and she's won an Oscar. You know? Yeah, well right. Yeah. And she did almost all of her own stunts in this movie, which yeah. I always appreciate. Not too Me many too. actors do that anymore. Ugh, love it. So I have a question to ask. This is my most uh, it, it's my largest grievance with the film. Did Dominic West forget how to act since The Wire? <laughs> oh my god, he was it. awful. It was so bad. It was, so it was awful. awkward at best for me. There were moments where I was like, "This just—it doesn't feel—it doesn't feel 
fatherly. No. It no. feels creepy. Like yeah. it's, it was not or like when she was gonna me. open the the tomb and she's yeah. like, I'm sorry, I didn't come all this way to see you die. And his yeah. face, I'm like, fix your face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I face hate how your face looks right now. <laughs> Harsh. Like not it, it was quiet. not he was, was not, not selling it. Well, yeah. how did you feel about Alicia Vikander or Dominic yeah. West? Like this? Um, she was fine, he was creepy. Uh, <laughs> so I do wanna kinda of touch on some of the points you guys already said. Yeah, uh, do I didn't it. wanna interrupt. No. Um, so the point about um, her, you feeling every hit, right? Yeah. So my problem with that was, uh, this is supposed to be a realistic movie, based in realism, much more realistic than the previous movies, yet she's surviving things sure. that yeah. are beyond, and without like any kind of, There's it's not affecting system. anything. Yeah. She gets stabbed and hurts for a little bit, but then, you know, once her dad fixes her up, she's great. Going. 100%. Yeah. She, and you said she's not a superhero from the beginning. That seems pretty superhero y to me. Like, you, she could take beatings. How is it the it's middle a, of the movie? It's Come a on. video game she movie, was right? Like, I, I get that. <laughs> but if you're, if, you're, if you're presenting a universe that's based in a realistic environment, then everything needs to kind of fall into that to right. some degree. Well, I'm going to argue with you about that for okay. a second. Because, like, if you, okay, no, put yourself in, like, her position. Like, if your whole life is, like, revolving around this idea that you're going to be able to meet up with this person again, and that's basically your entire life's objective is to figure out where the hell your dad is and you finally find him i mean i think that that kind of puts your puts her into a position where it's almost like mom it magically syndrome. heals her no she i don't think she gets <laughs> the, the mom but if you're not paying attention and you're just pumped full of just crazy amounts of adrenaline i mean and she's i i think she's kind of an adrenaline junkie anyway i not mean with her and I fighting she's always you know trying to be one of the boys anything she can do to make some money on the side i think she's a scrapper scrappy kind of little little girl and she's ready for this chance to really i guess meet her life's objective and yeah, she's not gonna she, let if the whole movie took her. place in in you know uh our time period then yes i would agree with you totally but like the adrenaline from all these things your body can only physically do so much even with adrenaline you know the moms that can lift the car right. off of the kid right. when, the, when the kid is trapped you know that's a very very short burst sure. of adrenaline and the mom is destroyed afterwards but she didn't lift a car no she didn't but she survived things that were i mean your body is still taking trauma whether it's through lifting or through impact or whatever i think it just falls for the normal action movie tropes of whoever the lead is gets to do crazy that's fine (laughs) i was my point that i was heading towards was that the original movie at least accepted that it was in a universe where all these things could be like it was less believable to begin with right so at true. least you're, you're, you're it's easier for me to swallow that pill that that it's she's able to do it and survive these crazy things i also know just in comparison because this is the most ridiculous like superhero the thing that i've ever seen was like in Fast 7, or Furious 7, or whatever it is, <laughs> how, seven. how did you feel about... I haven't seen it. Sorry. Okay. That's not Ryan's kind how of movie. No, it movie. actually is. Like, I like those movies. Not that movie. How did I you seen feel it. about Vin Diesel and Jason Statham taking down a parking garage with a fist fight? Oh, yeah. Like, no, no. you brought <laughs> Fur- it down. Furious 7 is without a doubt the worst billion dollar movie ever made. And I like the franchise. That movie is terrible. So I'm just saying, like, we can have some of suspicion of disbelief. Of just course, Just a yeah. little bit. But that's the thing. Like, the problem with the Fast the fast movies is that they've become these ridiculous yeah. parody superhero characters. Right? Like, nobody can, like, forget the fact that they should have had broken bones and could no longer fight. They take down a parking garage. Like, there's with a part where, like, there's a part where Vin Diesel, like normal human. Vin Diesel stomps on it because he knows it's going to crack in the right spot and Statham's going to fall through the middle. Like, it's so bad. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, that's something that you would think somebody in a giant mech suit would be doing in a really bad, like, Avatar film. But, um, <laughs> no, I, so for me, I absolutely ag- agree with what Ryan's saying, but I think it's what all action movies do. Yeah. So I don't think it's any different for this one, that's all. Like, every action movie I can think of, the lead people, they always get to get just beat up and keep going, you know? I did not really care for, like, the little cheesy one-liners. Like, before she kicks the guy into the chasm of souls, she's like, you messed with the wrong family. Like, could you? That was a bad line. (laughs) Like, I don't even blame her for that. I just blame the bad writer. Yeah. Keep that in. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, I get what that like, line was supposed to do. Yeah, right? but it's like, but it just didn't. But I wish they would have gone like full cheese, and she would have kicked him in like you're going down. Right? <laughs> just full just cheese commit to it. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, the, the movie wants to be taken very seriously, mm-hmm. and so you can't have that type of writing, especially at the end of the movie. Well, like, you've yeah, done a pretty good she, job yeah. when she's coming out of the tomb, and Lou Ren is is pulling her out, and uh, he kind of twists the line back on her, and he's like, you know, we're not dead yet, and she's like no shit i'm like you can dad just died like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. like what you don't you when you just be a little more sad than what you are right now <laughs> I don't know. can we appreciate the fact for a second that she actually raided a tomb right yeah. <laughs> she did no point okay so yeah she did raid a tomb <laughs> they really should just call this like i'm going after my dad I, right I get, calling her laura croft was a little bit of a mistake for me because she doesn't the Lara Croft I know even in the reboot is a fan of of archaeology and mm-hmm. you know likes this kind of stuff she has no care in the world about any of it other than solving puzzles I guess and finding her dad her dad was everything there was literally no passion for the actual tomb raiding or archaeology or anything about yeah. that. Well, I think this is setting up why she's going to be having that passion, and, and toward mm-hmm. the end of the film, like it's setting up for another film. It's yeah, setting up sure. For but in all that's an interesting point. In all the games, it's she's always been passionate and interested in the history and things like that. Even at the end, the only reason she wants to continue is because the company that mm-hmm. killed her dad right. is owned yeah. by the same company. Yeah. So it's still motivated by her, by her dad. dad. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I didn't even think about that. Well, it's I kind do. of a big problem the character for me like I mean she did it whatever, kind of but... a little bit like when they were in um what's her name the Him- Himiko oh yeah Himiko <laughs> yeah when they were in her final little area and when she was noticing the paintings on the wall and she's like wait something's not adding up and she really started analyzing those I think it just kind of shows you that she is a little bit knowledgeable on it. I feel like that just kind but... of lends itself to the problem solving abilities that they've kind of established. Yeah, and even that, you know, she, like when she's trying to find the journal to find where the island is, she isn't even the one that figures it out. The boat the captain is like, oh, captain. they're obviously <laughs> right. clocks. You're well, such an idiot. Yeah. The extremely <laughs> hung over. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, but she is supposed to be really smart. Like, that's why she figures yeah. out all the, all the puzzle stuff, most of the puzzle stuff on her own, yeah. right? But, but um, for some reason, they, they're they okay with blowing apart the entire mountain. But when they get to that door, no yeah. no more explosives, guys. We can't blow this door, but we have to have somebody come in and solve this puzzle. Well, they yeah, they tried it multiple it. times. No, they they were... Tr- they, I don't think they tried actually yeah. blowing up the door. Because yeah. they didn't find it until she even got to the island. And, and uh, They weren't... Yeah, they weren't there. They were blowing she up She leads pieces. them to that. And they try the explosive multiple times. Matthias Vogel said, let's try it so, again. Okay. Okay, so then why no, don't why don't explosives work thought, on that? Wait, but... I thought that was because they were trying combinations. I heard them say yeah. that they got the yeah. I didn't think they were trying to charge but... again. Like he uh, said that line. They okay. they had tried I missed it too. Yeah, I didn't I realize didn't they were trying out. to blow off the door. Yeah, they tried both. So what is that door made out? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's <laughs> magic, know, guys. It's made out of plot device. device. But that's the thing is that the movie debunks any magic, <laughs> right, right? right? Like yeah, the whole thing does. is that it is based in reality. So what? Yeah, that that's a little. It's a plot device. I don't like that. Whatever. I kind of I kind of. I'm okay with the fact, just going back to your point about it being a different type of Lara Croft, and it's weird because I, I I played the original game like a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, uh, I really liked it back in the day where I thought those graphics were the shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're so bad. Um, but no, I I actually didn't mind so much that they um, gave her. I guess it's like a slightly different backstory because for me that fills in a lot of gaps and it makes me kind of care about it and for like it's different from a video game perspective you don't really give a fuck like at least i don't i'm the kind of person that i don't really care about campaigns i just want to go in there and just like raid the shit or blow shit up or kill people like whatever it is that would explain why you like this movie (laughs) maybe (laughs) um but no i i think that it's it just fills in the gaps and it makes it for an easier watch for me like as a yeah sure I mean, I, I'm sure for some people that works. I'm more of a fan of the story-driven parts of the games and finding out, like, all the little details about the characters. You know, in Assassin's Creed, I'm running around trying to get all the feathers so I can just that that little bit of information more about uh, the characters. Um, so I, I think that the backstory is important to me, and you maybe that makes me an elitist uh, or whatever <laughs> about it, but no, I, I think that she that's has, a pretty important point about the character. She kind of has, like, the, the Kirk syndrome from the J.J. Abrams movies, right, where her dad died or disappeared, and so 30 she's minutes, not, Rachel. I know, it took a whole half hour. Um, and she's not going to you know, fulfill her potential that she could because her dad's missing, right? And so... 
it's a, I guess it's a little disappointing that it's only her dad that gets her <laughs> over that rather than it being yes, some Chris. other bigger <laughs> thing that she's trying to do the right thing. She's really just trying to find her dad, yeah. you know, which is a little disappointing. But I haven't played the new games. I played the original games. I played the Same first thing, yeah. of the new games. Yeah, of the reboot. There's two, right? Yeah. 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 I played the first of those two. And this movie, I'll say that it was fairly faithful in terms of like when you find the weapons and when she finds the weapons, it's all a lot of that is very much on point with the game. So if you're a fan of that first uh, reboot Mm -hmm. game, it's weird to try and specify. But yeah, the the newer versions of the the character, a lot of that was very accurate to the way she things happen for her in the game. So if you're a huge fan of that. Then, then I think you'll probably find something to like in this movie. When we talked about too, like right as it ended, it the movie itself almost had like a video game feel to it. Like it watches like a video game. Yeah, like the tomb. It's like different levels of the tomb to get to mm-hmm. you know the final. Or well, how many times have you played a video game and those spiky logs have come oh, at you while yes, you're playing? Yes, yes, like that that is it was a video from game. like ten video games. Like yeah. I saw that in Crash Bandicoot last week. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> favorite part too was when she's going through the camp yeah and like you're like oh man i have that anxiety she, like is she gonna caught? be caught like mm-hmm. she's got her freaking bow and arrow in this modern day society oh, and yeah is she gonna get killed okay, no i love everybody it. has machine guns <laughs> <laughs> again this bunch of just, at least they bring that yeah. up though at the end where the guy's like you really think i can't shoot your dad before the arrow yeah. reaches yeah, you like at least they acknowledge true. that right <laughs> well, let's not forget that walter goggins is a fantastic actor and he has been in some really great underrated roles like you know, he survived a Tarantino film, and that doesn't <laughs> usually happen with characters. Mm-hmm. And I, I love him as an actor, so he, he really pulled it out. So did Daniel Wu. I, he was great. I loved him. him. Yeah. I disagree. You didn't like really? him. I thought he was boring, and I thought that he was too trusting for somebody who's supposed to be a drunk and like getting ready to shoot anybody that walks on his property. He's like, oh, this little girl came in here, and now I'm gonna yeah, follow her true. across the world, and I'm just gonna, you know, risk my life because now she's my <laughs> best friend. And what? I'm gonna go back and my life. Too, okay. Yeah, <laughs> they both have daddy issues, and that's what that's really what the movie like, should have been called. Daddy, daddy issues. issues. It would have been way more accurate. <laughs> but that's the thing, though, right? So she she doesn't have like she she doesn't want to pursue. A, a, her career that she's supposed to pursue she's mm-hmm. you know putting her body at risk and her life at risk yeah. right he's doing similar stuff right he's just getting drunk right. and losing his money and you know threatening yeah, random yes. people who come to his boat because yeah. he's wasted and like they're very very similar people and they have that same goal and i think that's probably why <sighs> they get together See, but that's that's my thing like i'm like I, I guess i can kind of understand it a little bit but for me i just didn't feel the like that was too fast for me. It, it mm. didn't take enough time, but at the same time, I, I felt like he just wasn't her to dinner first. Well, and that's the thing. Like, are they <laughs> are they supposed to be romantically inclined? It's like what are they? I know. It was weird. I was like, are they siblings or are they love interests or it like what is their... platonic? It was yeah. weird to me. It just I didn't know what to feel about it. I was just conflicted, and I honestly feel like I could have just done without him. Um, but of course, she had to get to the. Audience, but who would have so. stood outside the tomb for? How many hours, hours, hours where they were doing right. nothing, waiting for her to come back out? Right. I just yeah. don't to go laugh back every five room. minutes saying, Let's go, Laura. Yo, guys, we gotta wait. We gotta wait for her, guys. I'm curious how much time passed. I know, like, like so many hours. But it's still super it's sunny still out. It's daylight. Yeah. 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 Like, it's the exact, it's been 15 minutes. Is it minutes. the next day? Is it an hour later? What's going exactly. On? It's actually a really small chamber. It just looks, like, they use a wide lens. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's like, it's a chicken. Did anybody believe for one second that Anna Miller was a good person? No. Because, no. Like, did you, have you seen her? I mean, <laughs> She well, not look like she thing. immediately she sits down, she talks to Laura, and she goes and touches her hair, and I'm like, oh god, yeah, like yeah, who does that? I can it's, see it. Like it, I didn't think anything of it. Some some mothers do that, but usually it's the ones that are really overbearing or like. It's like a power move. Yeah. Like, I just... No. Uh, my dad's co-worker has never done that to me. <laughs> it's very fake nice. Uh, like, oh, wait, wait. Was it just a co-worker? Or is yeah. She, I no, thought she was her mom. No. Her mom she's died. the stepmom. She's the stepmom. What? She's the stepmom. Right? I thought she was just, like, the power I thought of she was the lady. Yeah. I thought the she kind of, like, helped out... But the like you've never seen me line that Laura tells her. Yeah, but when you she flash back, whenever oh my god, we like I have to Google this later. No, I, when she's staying with like, her dad it? goes no. away all the time. When, when Laura died, I could have sworn it was her, her, her like. No, oh, she's not. She's know. a caregiver. She's not married. A caregiver. She's not married what? to Laura's dad. She, because when you when they flash back and she's 
practicing her archery with being William Tell and whatnot. <laughs> and the dad is leaving and he says, you know, I'll have Anna keep an eye on you. And she, she says, I don't need one of your babysitters to, to watch me or you know, something to that effect. That's who he was talking about. So... I don't even know where. Yeah, I don't think that I never got the vibe that they were related. No, I definitely really thought they were related. I did. I really did. I like, was with you. I thought, I thought it was, was like stepmom. the hated stepmom trope thing. I don't think so. Me too. I think it was just like evil board member trope. She's just See, that yeah. would have, then yeah. that would have rubbed me the wrong way to like okay. way worse. That's, if that. that's even weirder. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, in my mind it was like the stepmom is just like trying to yeah. connect with this person who they both mm-hmm. lost somebody they love. Right, so like I was excusing the weird behavior. From I didn't that. excuse it. I still thought it was weird, and I thought she was like obviously evil. But yeah, I, didn't <laughs> I get thought that they she were was evil. To me, it was almost one of those like evil, like how Cinderella's stepmom was. But yes, like when she did the hair thing. Well, I know she wasn't the stepmom, <laughs> but when like, she did the hair like thing, was. Batman Begins vibe with uh, Redger Hauer. Mm-hmm. That one. Like, yeah, it was it definitely was. more of like a business, true business vibe than it was a yeah. motherly. But, but like with the hair, it was she wins. one of those yeah. that That's I, why I was confused. I was like, I, I was so long. Like for me, I was like, ah, this. If they were related, couldn't she just this? sign the papers? Mm-hmm. And it depends mm-hmm. on what was in the will. If if the will specifically stated that the company goes to Lara and they had some type of prenup, uh, you know, that was the thing. So that's why I thought that they it was a second wife. I did too. So, mm-hmm. well, I guess not. I guess we were. Wrong. They should have gone into the prenup. They should have. They should have spent more time on cut, that. Yeah. I guarantee. Probably. <laughs> Is that the Snyder cut? That's the Snyder cut. <laughs> there should be a Snyder cut of every movie. That's all uh, the pretty stuff taken out. So I will say this: I didn't realize that Junkie XL did the soundtrack, and yeah, I he's think that's, getting way more work because of Batman versus Superman. So good for him. I think and it Deadpool. was the most forgettable part of the movie. I don't even remember. I don't remember what the soundtrack was. I remember the for one of the first songs, like when she's riding her bike through the street. But after that, it's yeah, I don't remember. Gone. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, I'm a soundtrack guy. Like I don't re- like remember the soundtrack at all for this movie. So that's super surprising that it was Junkie XL. Sorry, Boo. I never pay attention to the soundtrack. Do, Do you want to hug? No, I just I okay. like Junkie XL. And like, so it was just weird that I would not. It just wouldn't resonate with me at all. Like, just totally forgettable. Yeah. So. Well, I don't feel like there were a lot of like really solid. Like in, in a lot of films, they they slow it down and they give you like this really epic like slow moment or that you're right. really feeling what's going on. I didn't feel like we. had really had one of those yeah. for you yeah. to really hone in on the music aspect i feel like it was all very like there was so much crammed into this movie and yes. yet not it was just like a lot of action like yeah. i can't even think of like what is her theme no i don't i don't know you know oh, so, yeah, no. when you think of the wonder me. woman theme it's very memorable it's, yeah yeah so i'm, I'm a score <laughs> soundtrack <laughs> person so <laughs> anyway 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 what else can we focus on here? So were you guys disappointed that it wasn't actually magic and it was based no, in reality? No, I Not liked a that a lot more. I like magic. I, anytime you can give me magic, I'll take it. But yeah, it didn't bother me. Also. It didn't bother me in the movie, though. That it, that it wasn't there. It, yeah, it didn't affect the movie at all for me either way. But yeah, if I was going to have my pick, I would be like, I would rather it be magic because you know Justice League Dark and all that quite cool stuff and mystical and supernatural stuff is more up my alley than uh, you know. I was or a boring science. So you got zombies. I wanted magic. You got zombies, though. Yeah, I mean, kind of. They were totally they zombies. Were, I mean, they were hyper zombies. strong all of a sudden. They even full of rage. They got shot. That one guy got shot several times, and he once yeah. they eat you. I mean, that's yeah. pretty freaking zombie. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted I like... to see some magic stuff. I think I had a hard time not drawing parallels between this and the old Indiana Jones stuff. Yeah, and so those, of course, they had, you know actually brought in the more magical side. Not to use it, that might make some people well, upset, but religious. And... I mean, some of it was the fourth one had aliens. So. I like aliens too. No, I. A lot of people, like of you know, they they believe their religion is some sort of magic. So I know that kind of diminishes things, but a lot of people believe like their god is magic. So it works hand in hand. Fair I enough. mean, if you if you were living back in the time where she was put in her tomb, you probably would have thought yeah. that she was a magical, mm-hmm. mystical creature who had the power to kill all these people mm-hmm. with a touch of her hand. 
not realizing that, hey, that's how diseases spread. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely, <laughs> definitely true. Fun fact, I thought it was great because in high school, I was a carrier for mono and it didn't affect me at all. And I spread it to a bunch of my friends. You are oh, Himiko. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I was totally Himiko for like a year. <laughs> it was pretty insane. <laughs> So, okay, well, speaking with the Indiana Jones parallel, did anybody else notice that it's basically the same kind of premise where if the good guy doesn't get involved, the bad guys never find the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that. So in, in a way, the funny. good guy makes it worse. Kind of. Yeah. And then saves the day from themselves, basically. Yes. Right? <laughs> I would like to point out that they called it out multiple times, that, you know, if she had just done this... Mm -hmm. This yeah. wouldn't have happened, or research. you know, if she yeah. had not made the choice to open the tomb, her dad yeah. would have died anyway. And well, right, that that's the whole thing, right? Is that the good guy just doesn't listen to anybody else? Yeah, right, and just does whatever they want. <laughs> so... But in Indiana Jones, I kind of ignore yeah. that he's basically useless <laughs> in the first movie. Yeah, I mean... in the first movie, in this, in the third one, you know, he figures it all out because his dad's there. So that's true. And Sean Connery oh, makes every dad better. stuff, guys. <laughs> the third one dad. is my favorite Indiana Jones. Uh, okay, I know that bothers you. you right? It doesn't bother me that much. No, I, I, I guess I don't really have a ton to say about this movie. It was, it was not something that really stood out to me in my mind. Um, I'm trying to find. That's really it, how but... I felt the first time I watched it, and then the second time I watched it, I was like, wow, this was actually a lot better this time. I don't know. My, I guess maybe I just wasn't to... picking it apart. And when it's on TBS, it maybe watch I'll watch it, it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. I wasn't, like, super jazzed to go see it, but when you guys invited me, I'm like, I want to go because that sounds like a fun outing with girls that I never get to hang out with. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, I probably would have also waited. Um, but I'm glad that I did see it. But I think that my main problem is, I mean, that her whole objective was all about her dad, and then that relationship was just kind of like a huge flop for me, and just did not sell. Yeah, me. yeah. I'm. I almost feel like it would have been better if if she he had just him. been dead. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like if the dude had and then she like him. avenged him or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like at least then you have a revenge plot. But right. here, like, so why did everybody think he was dead? Did he, like, Because he had off? been gone for seven years. Yeah. So he just disappeared in the jungle and everyone thought he was dead? Yeah. Well, but the people on the island thought he was dead, Also too, thought he was dead. For how long? That's like, the question. Right. Five. Right? And like, five years? No, it was seven. Because, yeah, Well, he was gone for seven that. years from... And how from... long was Trinity on the island? Like, I It guess. sounded like close no to idea. seven years. Okay. They, and yeah, so here's the thing. So if... If um, Vogel really needs Lara's help to find this place and open the tomb... Why tell her the lie that he murdered her father? Yeah, yeah. that's not going to make her want to. I help. wonder if it kind of makes me think like maybe did he shoot him and just wound him really badly, and then like maybe he crawled off to go die in a cave, but he never died. I don't know. I mean, like, see how hard it was for a lot of having to get away from them. Some guy who's shot, who they're thinking is dead, probably would not be able to. Escape. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just I feel like I the, don't know how he did either. Like that, yeah. that premise doesn't game. work for me. Yeah. All he has to do is make up a lie about how he got hurt and he desperately tried to save her father and they were yeah. buddies or whatever. That would, what does she would know? help. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would help his right? cause a lot. And then she thinks she's helping her father with what he was setting out to do. Right? And then you lose that whole well, thing. Well, but I also think that the guy thought that he was smart enough to do it on his own now that he had this book mm -hmm. that supposedly had all the answers, that he was totally going to be smart enough to decipher. Yeah. Maybe. He was still it's miserable. It's a monologue either. situation. It is. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm going to tell you my whole plan. <laughs> I do want to touch on one thing that, that, that really stood out to me in this movie, but it's kind of been like a common thing among all movies. Everything is made for a sequel now, and it really bothered me yeah. in this movie. Mm -hmm. They spent like the last... 15 minutes of it figuring out oh now she's gonna get these two guns so now she can be just like the game and she's gonna set up this plot line for her sequel and you know I, I actually liked that it's fine I, like, I guess yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I, I, if, if you're so if you're mediocre about the movie then why would you be so excited to see another mediocre probably worse movie just based on the fact that almost every sequel is worse than the original I don't uh, you're I agree with you that I, I don't necessarily appreciate that a movie cannot be made with yet without the idea of a trilogy in mind, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Or beyond that. Or beyond even. that, right? So, like when I when they do the scene with Nick Frost um, at the pawn shop and she doesn't get the guns, I actually assume that they cut that because it never occurred to me that the movie would somehow wrap around itself and end up back there at the end because yeah. it would like, feel natural. Hmm. Nick Frost was 
my favorite part of the film. Oh my God. <laughs> I really liked a lot of the film. So this isn't anything bad. It's just that was a really good cameo that came out I of like nowhere. I heard nothing about it. I'm like, my ear is always to the ground about film. So I loved that part. <laughs> If she had gotten those guns before she left, though, that would have been a much shorter movie, probably. Yeah, that's true. That she showed up on the island. Yeah. A lot less. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that was the problem of trying to balance what people know of Lara Croft and what the mo- the new games are trying to turn her into, which aren't necessarily the same things. Because a lot of people still remember the old, old Lara Croft. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right. Exactly. And there's not really anything realistic about anybody using akimbo pistols. You know, one in each hand. That's not really a real yeah. thing. So in a universe you're basing on realism, is it cool? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's neat. And, so, you know, it's been done very well in some movies that are also not based in a realistic universe. Uh, but, I, I mean, it's just... I, don't I, know. I felt like it was fan service. That. that was just fan service. It was, but it's... I think so, but I liked it. It worked for me, guys. Oh, I'm not saying it didn't work. I thought it was cool, too. Right? But, you know, I understand what you're saying. I, it, it worked for me, because I liked the movie, so I want to see another one. But I do agree with you that that's what they were doing well yeah and setting up for it speaking on like the whole sequel trilogy having to do those things i think that when it comes to certain types of material that they're pulling from i think it's a lot easier for fans to want that like how many video games are there of laura croft more than one how many movies should there be probably more than one there's three already so i, mean, I, mean, I know i know i, I get what but you're you saying, run into the problem but... like warcraft where the warcraft movie which i really loved is not going to get a sequel and it leaves off so much stuff that now I feel like I watched just part of the story and I'm never going to get the rest. So now I'm just disappointed. Right. Rather than if you just make one solid thing and if it does well, great, maybe you get another. Yeah, just make it an encapsulated story. You don't need to worry about saying, if it does great, then then you go on to the sequel, you know, Mm -hmm. but you don't need to set up the plot of the sequel in the first movie. I, the, no, I, I do, because now we know what the second movie is going to be about, right? right? She's going to try and figure out Trinity how this woman is She's going to take that. She's yeah. going to take her down. Down. Exactly. With yeah. her pistols. Versus, you know, just <laughs> leading you to know that she's not quite done yet. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I'm really hoping Anna Miller turns out to be, like, a really good karate expert or something. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, this is like really surprising. Her, like, no, she's going to be Sigourney Weaver from The Defenders. <laughs> I was just about yeah. to say, That's like, almost gonna as good as Sigourney was. I feel like you would have needed to cast somebody else, like, <laughs> Charlize or something like that. Joke. Because, like, that would be cool. <laughs> Charlize Charlize Aaron Aaron funny, though. is a great villain. Yeah. But, but if she, been, if, yeah. if Anna Miller in the next movie is going to be the villain, I hope that she brings it because if not it will flop (laughs) i just don't know i mean right now it's tracking worse than warcraft so i don't know that it would get a sequel because square enix doesn't really necessarily got a much smaller budget than warcraft it's true true. it's true that's true and they did yeah it's safe and talking again about the budget and the amount of stuff they were able to do all the stunts all the yeah the craziness of the plane and the waterfall Mm -hmm. the only thing i just really wish there was a boulder I really was waiting for that to happen. Throw the run from a boulder. There wasn't happens. enough yeah. trophy exploration <laughs> bullshit things happening. In the I was waiting for she it. She literally, every surface she stepped on fell away at some point, and she <laughs> ran she just in the nick of time. And hanging. It yeah, happened like exactly. six times. How many times do we yeah. need to see stuff like that happen in the movie? She does have great finger strength. She has great She does. She really works with the finger She does. It's a big part of the food delivery business. Yes. And riding um, her bike. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. That was a weird part of the movie, the bike thing. Is that a thing that people do? I, I was know, wondering, like, in England. London. Like, yeah, that's... Just, yeah, I, guess. I mean, I know we do weird stuff here, but... You know. it, it looked fun. Like, I would it be a part of something fun. like that. And it, it was it nice to like find out that it was a car, <laughs> And she did. She did. Well, she hit the car. Well, yeah. yeah she did hit the car. car. That's true. Yeah, he's got her. He got to uh, uh, make money. And, and all the guys just bailed money. on her too. They're yeah, like, oh, of like, course mm-hmm. they did. Now clearly that was illegal. <laughs> well, right, I would imagine so. But that was—I mean—that was setting up the whole father thing, right? So she's in the middle of this big thing for this money she really needs, and she sees just generic middle-aged white dude number five, and has yeah. like a Vietnam flashback. <laughs> I know. What is happening here? Why is she like freaking out about this random yeah. dude? It's because all white people look the same. Yeah, well, that's obviously. exactly why. Obviously, that that must be it. Dominic West does kind of look like most other leading guys. So <laughs> actually, that is true. <laughs> profile. Uh, nothing distinguishable. Well, anything else then? 
Not really. Mm. I think we've covered most of it. It's a short movie compared to some of the ones yeah. that we've talked about. There's so much, there's so much action in it that it doesn't feel as long as it is. Like it, I'm the kind of person that if it's too long and it drags out, I might fall asleep. But um, I, I did not fall asleep in this movie. I did. I didn't have to do it this time. time. No. no. We got some <laughs> really cool trailers. I mean. Did we? I did. We did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got Ready Player One we and got that. Venom. Which is a great trailer. We got that. And we got some that. type of boating love story with uh, boating love story. Uh, what's her we name from uh, Secret Life of the American Teenager. Yeah, we didn't get that. Um, no, we got Rampage mm-hmm. instead of that. And mm-hmm. we got oh, and Rampage. That yeah. horror movie where you have to be silent. Oh, the quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they, where it's, it's got uh, the guy from the yeah. office. Yeah. No. no, not Pam. Just what? Jim. Just Jim. <laughs> that would have been better than The Office the movie. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. Someone do the most. <laughs> it's his real life time. wife, Emily yes. Blunt and Jim Krasinski, and she's amazing. Yes, and I'm pretty sure she's giving birth in a bathtub and having to be quiet while and there's silent. a creature coming yes. inside. Yes, but that so really I'm good. real excited. Okay, it looks so, so scary. these these you creatures. Haven't have, you this? haven't no. seen the preview? I thought we had the preview before the movie was on together. This does not sound remotely okay, really. oh terrifying. God. There it's are amazing. creatures that have taken over, and the population is down. I hope it's not going to be an M Night Shyamalan where it's not really a creature; it's just a random person. I'll be there. So it's yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to be quiet, or else they can hear you and hunt you, and that's yeah, all. Obvious. Yeah. So it's yes, kind yeah. Of. So this family has moved around and stayed alive by learning to sign and you know only whispering and because it takes up their whole town. Yeah, like their whole town is like Silent. destroyed. Yeah. See, that's a missed opportunity. They could have actually picked deaf people who survive because they don't talk and know how to sign. That would be much more. But could they hear it coming? Deaf people do make you know they they do have noises that well, I mean, they sometimes well, of course make. they do yeah. Yeah, but I think so, that, that would be a good opportunity to bring in deaf yeah. actors. That's all I meant. Sure. Okay. I mean, okay. Actually, actually deaf, 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 and um, you are different too. Right, but deaf people usually sign. That's all I meant. It's just a good opportunity yeah, to bring in na- natural signers who already know, rather than having well, actors who have also, to learn it. That's you know, all I meant. But, then you have to but they also talk. But they also talk to each other in the yeah. movie. Like uh, even in the trailer, like they have yeah. moments where they're okay. like, "I haven't seen the trailer, so I have no frame of yeah, reference here." Like, <laughs> they have kids. They have two kids, okay. and then she's pregnant. Yeah, and wow. they have to be quiet in this rickety ass house, and they've rigged up like a Stranger Things no light thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It looks, it looks really so neat. good. I'm really excited. I've, to see it. No, I, I haven't heard of that it one. And then so we also we uh, it's not on my list. Had a trailer it's with Gabrielle list. Union as a mom whose kids get taken hostage. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I just say like oh yeah, I saw that too. This I had is that like one. the first time I've ever seen this with a, a black family. Yes, and, like, and I like. like I I've seen this story it. so many yes. times that it's usually a white guy who's family. And she comes in and no black woman. Everyone. Where did you see the movie? Cinemark. Where did you see the movie? Plaza. Huh, okay. So I saw it at an AMC. We had like but... seven or eight trailers. We had a lot of trailers. So I didn't have that many. I think I just had those four. I can't think of another one. It was one. a lot. But, but okay. it was, yeah, I'm I'm real. Actually, I think I'm going to go see that one too. Yeah, I do too. It looked really good. It's cool. been a while since I've seen her in anything. I yeah, I was like, I can, when I She's see her face, it's immediately like, bring it on. 10 things I, I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, then let's go around and give our final grades for the movie. Uh, pluses and minuses are okay too. Ryan, would you like to begin? Why not? <laughs> uh, we just go clockwise. At like a 73, somewhere in between like a C and a C minus. Could be a C, could be a C minus, depending on the day. I mean, it, depending if the teacher's an answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not the worst video game movie to ever come out. So that's that's a plus. That's definitely true. Yeah. It's probably Doom. That's right up there for sure. Yeah. Assassin's Creed is also I haven't seen it. pretty low on the list. Yeah. I give it a B minus, solid B minus. Yeah, I do a B plus on there. It would have been just a flat B had I not seen it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. second time got that little plus on there, so <laughs> I'm gonna go with a B minus just because Dominic West was so bad. He was <laughs> so bad. He was, he, was, he was creepy. Like you won awards, sir. What happened to you? I was almost happy when he died. Like, oh. That's not how I was supposed to feel. Yeah. That's right. No, I mean that's how you feel about him in 300. Not in this movie. You want him to die in 300. He was the racist or rapist senator. Oh. Huh. Maybe that's it's why. It's been a while he since just, I've seen 300. He comes off as rapey. He should only be typecast as really rapey that's people. That's so sad. Um, that's the one thing I'm sure you guys never want to be called. No. No. Um, probably not. I'm, I'm, 
somewhere between a B minus and a C plus. I'm having a hard time deciding one way or that. I want to give it a B minus because it's a real, it's a really good video game movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just as, as a, a movie, film, but just as a, like a movie, I, I mean, I still would rather watch Indiana Jones. Okay. No one said you can't That's watch fair. both. True. And I will watch both. We'll play the game. A Kimbo gun well, to your I actually head. Have, I have the game. And then we have the, I have the first <laughs> of the reboots. You will enjoy that. I have a chance to play it. So. But it was good. I thought it was a good time. It was certainly not a bad movie, and it wasn't boring or anything no. like that. And I've seen a lot of boring movies. Um, uh, cool time. <laughs> you fell asleep. Was it boring? No, but yeah. it's, that's for another time. We already Dang talked it. about that, so we can talk about that later. But um, So I'll, I think I'll go C+. I think it's probably fair. Um, I feel like maybe I'm a little too easy on movies sometimes. I've given other movies <laughs> higher ratings that don't deserve it, so we should go back someday. And wow, re-rate. and redo those <laughs> retro. Like, look, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it. I gave, I gave Suicide Squad and Justice League way too high of ratings after you re- did. after think, like, thinking it over. And then you argued with us too. Well, at least with me, I'm pretty sure you argued with Rachel too about a lot of that stuff. But I stand by BVS. So there we I'm go. Not, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I'm not gonna... All right, so that is going to be it for us. Uh, we are the Heroes Podcast Network. You can find us at Heroes Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch, where we stream live every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central. Um, you can chat with us, as several people did tonight. So thank you to those who did join us live. You can, of course, find us on iTunes, through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Blog Talk Radio, and Spreaker, or heroespodcasts.com. We'll go around and where everyone can talk about where they can find you starting with Ryan. I'm just gonna. Of course, because it's easy. Uh, <laughs> we just go in the same order. It's Buster easy. props, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Yep. Mickey Mouse cosplay, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Vero. Vero. Same. Vero. Um, I keep forgetting about Vero. All the yeah. regular <laughs> social media platforms. Casey Lane cosplay. That is how it's spelled because I'm not trying to spell everything out. Like Kansas City <laughs> like Lane. Kansas like Kansas City road. Lane space cosplay (laughs) i'm siren ray on everything i have ridiculous social medias out there so (laughs) can find me on everything and i am the star trek dude on twitter and facebook we will be back next week to review pacific rim uprising which Mm. ryan is super excited about i like the first one i'm not i'm more excited about that than tomb raider that's fair robots and monsters yes Yes. Yes. and john boyega so it's gonna be great i'm really excited about it so we'll catch you guys next week thanks for tuning in bye